Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'd like to take science and apply it to all things plants, both indoors and outside. And today's video, we are gonna be determining why leaves are yellowing on the bottom of one plant and what the fix for that may be. So one thing I will say is that this issue that's coming up with the yellowing of the leaves on the bottom of the plant is the same across the board. So if you have a house plant, a vegetable, a flower, a tree, whatever the case is, and it's suffering from this, it's the same reason. So we're gonna throw this up on my husband's truck because I don't have anywhere else to stand and show you guys without crouching down on the ground and my tripod's not that compact. So here you can see I have a cannabis plant, but like I said, this rule applies to all plants across the board, whether it's house plants, vegetables, flowers, you name it. And you can see a yellowing. When I say yellowing, in some cases it may literally be yellowing, or in others it may be a lime green type mix. So the way that I know this isn't a magnesium or calcium issue is because my veins inside of the yellow are not green, meaning there is no dark green veining or green whatsoever in the leaves that are damaged. So what this means is it is a nitrogen deficiency. Nitrogen deficiencies start at the bottom of the plant and work their way up. If not treated, the plant in and of itself will not be able to photosynthesize, which will cause it to flower sooner and ultimately end its life cycle a little bit quicker. Now, in the case of cannabis, this is a bad thing because I need the photosynthesis to take place in order to get the flowers a little bit larger. And yes, this is the one that you guys said was gonna die a horrible death and et cetera and so forth. But <laughs> I know what's going on with this one. And I do have another one that's actually doing very, very well from the same batch that I started initially. So how do we treat a nitrogen deficiency that is showing up in our plant? So the number one way to treat this is actually through the soil. Nitrogen is one of those nutrients that is not easily absorbed through the foliar application. So that's not going to work for us here, similar to what we saw with the pepper plant. The other thing is, is that we need to diagnose what exactly is going on with that soil. And if you guys remember what I said about autoflowers and how sensitive they can be, I mentioned in order to reduce that sensitivity, I was going to use a self-watering container. However, one pot I used a very porous sunshine mix number five. It is large perlite, again, very porous material. And so therefore anything like nitrogen is easily absorbed due to that air being present. With a wet soil, we have a lot of nitrogen loss. This is part of the reason why the Canadian government wants to, you know, reduce emissions by 30% and one of the things that they're taking on is nitrogen. The reason for this is because nitrogen is not a stable nutrient. It can be leached, meaning moved from the soil into the water table down below, which in this case is literally my reservoir for the water that then waters this plant. And the nitrogen also can be volatilized, meaning gassed off into the atmosphere. And that will happen most likely, or it's most predominantly happens in a wet soil, which is exactly what this is 24 seven. So the way to treat this is going to be bringing an immediate nitrogen source to its presence or somehow reclaiming and putting a little bit more pore space inside of the soil that is put in. So if this was a house plant, I would repot it with a more porous medium, especially if I knew that the roots were continually saturated and I was in a self-watering container. The other thing I would look at is maybe my pH in a house plant scenario, especially if I'm using Leca or Lechusa Pond, anything of that nature, and I would adjust that accordingly. I have blog posts and videos on how to do that. But in the case of this, it's kind of winding up here in zone three, meaning he's not coming inside. I do not like the smell of these. He has literally two, three weeks to get his gear in order. And if he doesn't make it before the first frost, he's going in the garbage or the compost. So what I wanna do here is actually use worm castings. This is going to be organic and it's also going to provide nitrogen. Not enough that it's gonna cause any sort of light or um, soft growth, which ultimately can leave the plant more susceptible to disease and pests, but it will provide much needed nutrients through a depleted soil. So the worm castings I'm gonna be using is literally called worm poo. So this is the stuff I'm using. It is literally worm castings and it's actually kind of a cool company because it's out of the GTA, which 
for those of you that aren't Canadian, that's Toronto. And they're taking food waste from Toronto and Waste Not Farms is letting worms decompose it and turn it into fertilizer. So that part's actually really cool. And I am doing a giveaway on my Instagram for a four kilogram bag of this. I wish I could do it on YouTube, but the company is not sponsoring YouTube and they're really not sponsoring the Instagram one either, but that's where they want it. So unfortunately that's where I have to have it. And I know some of you don't have the Instagrams, so I'm sorry about that. But if you want to purchase some of this, you can, I have a discount code you can use and I, it's 10% off. So you can, you can try. Anyways, I did use this for a foliar application. Um, and I did a video on that and I actually really liked it and it's turned around the plant quite a bit in a very short period of time. So I'm going to be using this bad boy to top dress this bucket with and ideally hair in the mouth. Um, ideally in the future, what I would do or what I will be doing, cause I'm going to move these indoors, um, my self watering buckets for my indoor garden where I'm going to, you said to let me know in the comments what you want to see. So I'm thinking herbs more so, and maybe like patio cucumbers and like smaller veg, but I'm leaning more towards herbs because I, that's what I'm going to use. I want to do like leafy greens or lettuce, but I'm just not sure based on like how much energy it takes to produce that, if that cash crop is worth it. You know what I mean? I'm going for what's going to, you know, lessen the grocery bill the most. And I just, herbs is where I'm leading to. But anyways, so ideally what I would have is actually their potting soil mixed into this. You can see I have like the wood chips, the perlite, I have the worm castings and a little bit of coconut coir, that sort of thing in here. This is what I need to have put in this container and or the sunshine mix for, but this would be kind of a substrate that I would be looking at for these self-watering containers because I just, I don't have the porosity in here and it was an experiment. I wanted to see if a regular potting soil would work. So when I talk about the self-watering uh, bucket setups, I'll be able to like, you know, let you guys know like, yeah, you can use any potting soil or no, you should stick with sunshine mix number five. And I'll insert some footage of how well the other plant is doing in the sunshine mix number five. It's because it has that big perlite and a lot of it. Any hoosers, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to go check out that giveaway over on Instagram and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.